Good morning, everybody. On behalf of the Dean and Chapter, a very warm welcome to the Cathedral this morning for this sung Eucharist. Worship has been offered in this sacred place for over 1,400 years, and so it's a joy and privilege to be gathered here at the heart of our communion, joined by our ecumenical guests to offer our prayers and praise today. You will notice that some of our hymns this morning can be sung in several languages, so don't be surprised if you hear people near you singing in their own language. It's a great sign of the international nature of this conference. Before the service begins, there are a few practical details to draw to your attention. The first thing is that this service is being professionally filmed, so you can relax and put your mobile phones away and your cameras into your pockets so that you don't need to be distracted. We can all be present in the moment, I hope. When it comes to receiving communion, please do follow the instructions of the stewards and they will guide you uh, to the communion stations. Now, we want everybody to feel included today, and so, of course, everyone is welcome to receive communion. But we understand that some people may not wish to, but please do come forward for a blessing and just keep your heads bowed to signal to the person administering that that is your wish. Many people will wish to receive communion in one kind, and if you're doing that, if you hold out both your hands together, that will signal to the person giving you communion that you just wish to receive in one kind. If you would like to receive in both kinds, the person administering will intinct your wafer for you. Uh, If you just hold out one hand, they'll know that that's what you wish. Now, if you want um, a gluten-free wafer, you'll be pleased to know you don't have to stand on one leg. You just tell, tell the person, everybody's got gluten-free wafers available, so just tell them that that is what you need um, and you'll get the correct kind of wafer. You will have noticed that it took some time for the, uh, for the bishops to process in this morning, so it will take quite a long time for them to process out again. So I would ask the congregation to be patient at the end of the service and to remain seated until the processions have left. I think that's all I need to say for now. We hope that you enjoy this wonderful service and we keep a few moments of quiet reflection now before we begin.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray earnestly for God's blessing upon those who are gathered here, that through our discussions and our walking together, we may grow into a deeper understanding of one another and a deeper love for the world Jesus Christ came to save. Titiro king away or tokero e horane. Mehe pipi froro a kitua takoto te pai. Fiti fiti tata tata. Hera taua kitua takoto te pai. E teatua ora. Ioto ito mato iringa e fano hotia anamato e que kite tu manako ora nau mato i karanga kito mara matanga fakami haro kia hiko e fakamua ai mato he iwi mau kia fakatau iho to waidu tapu he fakapai i tene huinga amorangi. Kia fai hua ai a mātou mahi, a mātou karakia, tō mātou piringa tahi i roto i tō kororia. Whaka ongo oho ngia ngā tāngata i ngā tōpito katoa o te ao. Kia hiko i tahi, kia nākau tahi ai. Hei ākonga a ihu karaiti as disciples of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sin we might live for righteousness by his wounds we have been healed so let us confess our sins our pride and our brokenness that we may know God's forgiveness and his healing Merciful God, we have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We confess to you all our unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy and impatience of our lives, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people and our planet. We confess to you our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves, our love of the esteem of others, and our reluctance to hear those who speak to us uncomfortable truths. We confess to you our failure to commend the faith that is in us, our fixation on our status rather than our service, and our struggle to love those with whom we disagree. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
In silence, let us pray. Loving God, in your goodness you call us to your service, and in your mercy you provide for our needs. Grant to all those who minister in your name the courage to speak your words, the humility to wash the feet of others, and the love to work for justice and reconciliation in the world, that you may be glorified in all things, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Entonces la palabra del Señor vino a él con este mensaje. Ve ahora a Zarepta de Sidón y permanece. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little bit of oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterwards, make something for yourself and for your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of the meal will not be emptied and the jug of the oil will not fail until the day of that until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she, as well as he and her household, ate for many days. The jar of the meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah.
A reading from the first letter of Peter. Man mat de gigo gun liu. So ye, name on yo gun son, ji sao, yo ging sing to go. Jo yo gun de, si be ti ti sa sang oi. Yang wai oi, nung jay yim ho do dick joy. Name on yo wu sang fun doi, but fat yun yi. 人人要照自己所得的恩赐彼此服侍，作上帝各种恩赐的好管家。若有人讲道，他要按着上帝的圣言讲；若有人服侍，他要按着上帝所赐的力量服侍，好让上帝在凡事上因耶稣基督得荣耀。愿荣耀和权能都归给他，直到永永远远。阿门。This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus Christ, according to John, glory to you, O Lord. Jokhon tini tahader paad huya dilen, ar apunar uporer bostro poriya, punoray boshilen, tokhon tahadiyo ke koilen, ami tomader proti kik kori lam, jano? Tumra ama ke guru, o prabhu boliya sambodhon koriya thako, ar taha bhalo, keno na ami sehi. Bhalo, ami prabhu o guru hoya, jokhon tomader paad huya dilam, তখন তোমাদের পরস্পরে পা ধোয়া উচিত কেননা আমি তোমাদিগকে দৃষ্টান্ত দেখাইলাম যেন তোমাদের প্রতি আমি যেমন করিয়াছি তোমরা তদ্রূপ করিও সত্য সত্য আমি তোমাদিগকে বলিতেছি দাস নিজ প্রভু হইতে বড় নয় ও প্রেরিত নিজ প্রেরণকর্তা হইতে বড় নয় এই সকল যখন তোমরা জানো धन्य तुमरा जो दिए शकोल पालों करो। This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. As we gather in this 15th Lambeth Conference, we carry in our hearts and pressed on our minds matters and situations that challenge and or trouble our respective homes, countries, regions, dioceses, and provinces. We also gather to celebrate the diversity and the gifts that have been generously given to us for the mission and ministry in God's church for God's world. As the author of First Peter puts it, like good stewards of manifold graces, grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. The readings set for today's Eucharist service have reoccurring keywords 
that can be summed up into two themes, namely servant leadership and hospitality. To be a servant leader is to show hospitality. Let me remind you of your consecration day. The charge was read and few of the following words were said by the chief consecrator. They said, the church is the body of Christ, the people of God and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, the whole church is summoned to witness to God's redeeming love who reveals God's self to God's people through the normal, the physical, the temporal, and the mundane things of this life, and thus to work for the coming of God's kingdom. To serve this royal priesthood, God has given particular ministries. Bishops are ordained to be shepherds of Christ's flock, and guardians of the faith to proclaim God's word and leading God's people in mission, obedient to the call of Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit, bishops are called to gather God's people and celebrate with them the sacraments of the new covenant, thus formed into a single communion of faith and love, the church in each place and time is united with the church in every place and time." Close quote. In this part of the charge of the ordination of bishops, there is a reminder and also an invitation to serve God's people and practice hospitality wherever we have been planted sent and placed. And we are to do this in season and out of season. There is no limitation on how much you can be hospitable or how much you can serve God's people. It's ongoing and continuous. As the church, we are called to practice hospitality and we are called to serve. Hospitality in the Oxford Dictionary is defined as the friendly and generous reception and entertainment of guests, visitors, or strangers. This was not enough for an African girl. I had look into my context what it means to be hospitable. In the African context, hospitality is defined as the extension of generosity, giving freely without strings attached. It can also be seen as unconditional readiness to share. It is also the willingness to give, help, assist, love, and carry one another's burdens without necessarily putting profit or rewards as a driving force. This is what we call Ubuntu. A person is a person through other persons. Umtu ngumuntu gabantu. Motu gimotu gabatu. This hospitality is demonstrated in our Old Testament reading by the widow who welcomed and fed a stranger with her remaining diminutive food supplies. This act of hers could have resulted in death by starvation. As the text states, she told Elijah that she's gathering sticks so that she may go home and prepare a meal for herself and her son that they may eat and die. In our second reading, the author of First Peter urges us to be hospitable as he writes, 
Be hospitable to one another without complaining, like good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. And in John Gospel, Jesus is quoted as saying, so if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Hospitality can be a powerful and also a vulnerable thing to do. Powerful because you allow people into your space and share what you have with them. In most cases, the host is in control. Vulnerable because in most cases, as a host, you allow strangers or stranger and friends into your space, into your domain. To welcome a guest into your home also involves being open to that person's presence by showing interest in what that person has to offer. You know, as a host, you don't relax until the last guest has, has left without breaking your china. <laughs> Our readings today remind us that saving and service or servant leadership and hospitality go together. The widow hosted Elijah and served him food. And through Elijah, God promised her that the jar of meal will not be emptied and the jar of oil will not fail until the day that God sends rain on earth. Jesus Christ demonstrates this also in our gospel reading. We read that during the meal with friends and disciples, he moved away from the table and took a basin with water, demonstrates a new way of saving by washing their feet and directs that they should do that for each other. This is both an act of hospitality and service. And love, love is central to this act. So how do we as the church, the Anglican church, demonstrate hospitality in a world that is going through and experiencing some serious pain and strife? We do this by following the model that has been set for us by our Savior. And this model is not self-centered nor inward-looking. It calls us not to be never gazing, but it calls us to first seek God's kingdom and God's righteousness and all the things that we wish for, that we yearn for, that we call for, that we hope for, will be given to us. But first we seek the kingdom. As the Anglican communion, we can and we have, have it in us to heal and serve the world. We do this by sharing what we have freely without the fear that we will run empty. Because our God is a God who provides. And we have been assured that, that those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary they will walk and not grow faint. Our jar will not be emptied, neither our jar fail. 
We serve a God who provides. One may ask how we as the church can demonstrate hospitality to each other. For many, the church has been a place of pain and hurt. We can and have it in us to serve God's children, to love all God's children, not only those who look like us or speak the same language as us or are of the same socioeconomic or political class as us, all God's children. This Lambeth Conference, this church of ours, has the power and is capable of healing the world and healing the church. And as we do this, First Peter reminds us to maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. As I conclude, my prayer is that during our time together and beyond, may God's name be hallowed and not ours. May God's will be done and not ours. May God's kingdom come and not ours. Amen. We keep a few moments of silence to reflect on the words of the Bishop of Lesotho. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. <laughs> Mwariva nerudo, 
ipai njere zenyu ne kuruziro kuna abo wose vano sangana pam sangano we gungano re Lambeth conference kubore kids ane nguva yabo pamochete chira ido chedu chimuti ridwe mukutenda uye ne mabasa ebo tenzi ne tete zenyu nzwa imo na matowelo. Premier Lord Permissioner Aza Misonga Samuel and Nasogne, Sobele Ashistinos, Tai Rogua, Cotinaika Karan, Yab, Mandari Mabibina Somashako Karan. Breed so even let the Paliba Lebanamos, the Tabale Tsanu Hueco, Emandari Tama, Ekatama, Amlegaiko Pratipa Tatalai, Nabikaran Garno Horse, Tapaiko Kriba Maprabu, Hammer Prat Nasuno Horse. And the Manta Biscavano. Taris Turulana is the eight of Tunch, Mandirna Sotunzo, Payasa Wafiatana, Sundar, Arafim Bunana, and Firina Rev. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yari Kodavan Hamatni, Zaminki, Izet Karnasika, Johamiz and the Gideti, or a Pni, Paydar, or the Mount that could receive a sail kid, Kam Karnimi Mada Deti. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, bring your healing to our broken world. Strengthen those who suffer warfare and violence. Sustain those who suffer poverty and hunger. Heal those who are sick. Comfort those who mourn. And direct all our hearts to seek mercy, reconciliation and truth. For the sake of your Son, who offered his life for our salvation, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the fifth century, as I said 
earlier in this conference, which was before Sammy was ordained. <clears throat> North Africa was at the heart of the Christian world. Since then, much has changed. But owing to the faithful service of his predecessor, Dr. Munia Anis, and his own faithful service, the church in Egypt, the Anglican church in Egypt, one of the earliest Protestant churches in that part of the world, and a, an independent and freestanding church, has grown and spread. Literally hundreds of churches have been planted south on the borders where people had moved as, because of war and other causes. Missionary work is being done across North Africa, as it is by other churches, including the Coptic Orthodox. And we are absolutely delighted that His Eminence Archbishop Angelos is here today. And we welcome him very warmly indeed. And I am surprising him by asking him to come and stand with us because it is a symbol of the wonderful relationship we have with His Holiness Pope Tawadros. And last year, during the period of COVID, we saw the launch of the 42nd or 43rd, I sometimes lose count, province of the Anglican Communion. It's a kind of large province, as it goes from the Horn of Africa to Mauritania, from the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic. It is a province with many parts of it in war and conflict. And His Grace, Archbishop Sami, is the Archbishop of that province. We did not have the occasion, because of the pandemic, to carry out the normal tradition of presenting him with a primatial cross for the province. And today seems a wonderful opportunity to do that. And so, with love for those in the province you serve, and knowing the partnership you have with other Christians, especially the Coptic Orthodox, whose faithfulness and holiness has lasted through 1,400 years of suffering. It is, I present you, your grace, with this primatial cross. Sammy, would you just come here for a minute? Sorry, I'm not going to ask you to do anything embarrassing. <clears throat> I thought we might uh, announce the peace. Uh, uh, we might say together, the, the peace of the Lord be always with you, and we'll say that together. If you're comfortable to do so, please stand. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Prabhu Shanti, Apnar Shahayakhok. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Le Seigneur soit avec vous. May God be with you. Élevez vos cœurs. Rendons grâce au Seigneur notre Dieu. Il est juste que tes enfants d'adoption et de grâce te remercient. Your children of grace need to thank you, O oh God, source of life, and through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, he was born as one of us and came to live and serve, to teach and heal, and to draw us to communion with you. He gave up his life for us and was lifted up on the cross to draw all people to himself. And now we give you thanks because you gather your children throughout the world to be one, even as you, Father, are one with your Son and the Holy Spirit and to be the body of Christ and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the gathered company of heaven, we praise and glorify you, saying, Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, who sealed your everlasting covenant with his blood. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your promise, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us Christ's body and blood, that we may live in him and he in us. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, gave you thanks, broke this bread, shared it with his disciples and said, 
Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this whenever you eat it in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave you thanks, shared it with his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Father, as we come together in faith to share this communion, we remember your love shown in Christ once for all on the cross, your power revealed in his resurrection and your glory which you promise at his last coming. Accept our offering of thanks and praise. Breathe your Holy Spirit into our lives. Heal our wounds. Calm our fears. And give us peace. Renew us in your love. Restore us in your image and unite us in the body of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory belong to you, ever-loving God, forever and ever. Amen. As we join our prayers, with the Church Universal. So we say, each in our own language, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, as we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. As we come to communion, we are all aware that some who are here will not feel able to receive communion. There are some by the rules of their own church among our beloved and valued ecumenical guests. And there are others among us because of our own divisions. In this moment, let us, as we take communion, remain in silence when we're sitting in our place and pray for the healing of God's church. Not only the Anglican communion, but of the church Catholic and universal, that we may find by God's power the moment when we can come together throughout the world as one. body of Christ.
If you are comfortable to do so, please stand. Let us pray. God of love, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who calls us to proclaim the good news of your kingdom, to teach, baptize, and nurture new believers, to respond to human need by loving service, to transform unjust structures of society, and to strive to safeguard the integrity of your creation. Empower us to fulfill this calling through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, with the Holy Spirit, inspires us and equips us for mission and service, now and forever. Amen. My apologies to the Swahili speakers here. I'm going to try this in Swahili. I trust that as many as possible will respond in Swahili. Mashaka yetu yote. All our problems. All our difficulties, all the devil works. All our hopes. Christo Ali Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.